Viewer discretion is advised. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the New to Wrestling podcast. This week, we watched the April 14th, 1997 edition of Raw is War, and the match card is as follows. We had the Legion of Doom taking on the Godwins uh, in our opener. In our second match, we had Hunter Hearst Helmsley taking on Jesse James. We had Rocky Maivia taking on Savio Vega. The Sultan took on Goldust. The Headbangers... Uh, versus Vader and Mankind. And in our main event, we had a crush taking on Ahmed Johnson. All wow. right, guys. So this one, this one was weird. This weird. Was international. This Girl. one had technical difficulties. So it had it, had it all. Brought uh, out every flavor you could think. Oh, it had bikinis. Uh, it had... Not that it fit uh, uh, nicely into the episode at all, but we really jammed them in there. <laughs> like, oh my God, we really um, threw it in your face. But uh, for those of you watching the the video portion, if you look right behind me, right here, there it is, there it is, uh, you'll see a Dudley Boys uh, ECW shirt. Kelsey and I have been reunited. We reunited oh my, this felt weekend. So good. Um, we got absolutely no sleep. Um, but not a lick. No, when I tell you, I was like a shell of a human after. <laughs> like shell as uh, is like the tenor of every time we get together for a week and we're like yeah we're gonna do xyz and then we do a hundred thousand things don't sleep and mm -hmm. then we're like okay see ya see ya yeah no literally, one of us just... always loses our voice i lost my voice when you came here last time you lost your voice when i came there this weekend yeah it was it was it was nuts like yeah. so much so that like it was just like just air like i was just shoving air like through like through my vocal cords and like nothing was happening i was like <laughs> But you know, oh such is life. That's that's how you know you had a good time. True. That's what I'm saying. So, um, for those of you that don't know, I live in the Philadelphia, Greater Philadelphia area. She mm -hmm. came to visit me this weekend, and we got to go to Suplex Vintage Wrestling, which is so cool. The only brick and mortar wrestling shop, I think, on the East Coast, and who we will actually have as a um, guest in the very, very near future. Um, obviously not the store itself. We'll have one of the uh, owners of the, the proprietors. store. Um, so um, exciting. So that's going to be super exciting, but we did get to go and like hang out with uh, just wrestling fans, which was really nice. Everybody at the shop was super, super nice. And just so like, nice. Was just down to just talk wrestling, uh, obviously. So, but so nice. When you're a wrestling fan and you really got to like, look out in the wild for others it's nice to just have a place to go to um yeah fun um so i will definitely be making the uh the trek back it's only a trek if there's like traffic <laughs> yeah I it's... actually i don't physically live that far from the shop it's the getting in and out of philly <laughs> That's yeah the... as i'm sure a lot of you can relate to but it's it is such a cool store it's in an amazing section of philly like it's just not that there aren't i mean philly's just cool regardless but it's just, it's the coolest shop. Everyone there was just ridiculously nice. So willing to just like, again, like you said, like talk to you about wrestling, just like wanted to show you everything that was awesome. Like when you, I think picked up the Dudley boys shirt, one of the employees was like, oh, like come over here and like, look up at this other shirt. There's like a shirt that was like literally worn by, by, Spike. by Spike, like so crazy. Mm -hmm. They have such so many amazing things in there. If you guys are in the area or able to go, please go check them out. Cause it's, a hundred percent worth the trip so fun so fun so fun so fun but all right guys let's get into this one this one was a very very um if there was ever an episode that was just like a how do i say like a hodgepodge of it was a decoupage of a bunch of different random things i am not even sure what yeah, happened so so this episode actually emanated from i guess three locations mainly two um three they added just i think for the sake of saying it was coming from three locations yeah uh, um so it was coming from johannesburg south africa somewhere in america they didn't really say never said they one just time. kept saying specifically that they were in america right i was like, I was like that's not like we're not one of those like tiny european countries where you go like oh like i'm in like belgium and you're like okay i get it generally you're, you're in belgium yeah, yeah yeah right yeah. you know what I'm i mean in Prague. like yeah you say like i'm in america like it's even so massive say, it could even be if you say new york it's like are we upstate are we in the city are we right. like in the finger lakes like what's like where when uh, america 
apparently Girl. un uh, unnecessary information. That's so crazy. So we had like kind of split commentary teams for the two events. So in America, we had Vince and Jim Cornette back from the in, dead. At, who? Yeah, honestly, we haven't seen in months, and Forever. they just and they just brought back like just didn't say anything D no didn't comment mention his absence nothing um the we, only we person seen... that brings it up is like the honky tonk man later on later. like that's it like that's it but the we haven't seen him since the undertaker tombstoned him right like five ever ago when when jim was still the manager of vader right. and like paul bear hadn't acquired him yet so right. like what are you I... doing months no comment nothing there he is on commentary just like yep this is this is normal. Just back, just back run of the mill. So um, and crazy. then on the South African side, we had uh, JR and the Honky Tonk Man. I guess Jerry the King had the night off, um, but that was not the combo I was expecting. It was it no. was certainly not the the odd couple I I had in my head. No, it, the couple was too odd. Therefore, there wasn't quite the. Uh repartee i guess i right. was mm -hmm. i was envisioning right that's fair. but i don't know but don't alas know. we're here um so in our opening match we have the legion of doom taking on the godwins this match came to fruition after the godwins uh inadvertently slopped uh the legion of doom last week when mm -hmm. their intended tag team champions Oh, and then the Bulldog ducked out of the way at the last minute, thus covering mm -hmm. the Legion of Doom, and an ensuing fight happened, yes. and it wasn't enough. Uh, the retribution wasn't just, wasn't as sweet or as fulfilling, so we have this match going on. So, Thank God. Um, uh, the, who is it? Jim Cornette called it a drive-by slopping. That was, yeah, that funny. was cute. Love um, that. I, I will say Jim really went out on a limb, and this, it's, like on commentary in this episode, uh, especially in regards to like the tag team champions, which made them sound like they were like the the masterminds of like this match happening. This, and yeah. Kelsey pointed out that they just ducked. That that's it. They did you, what any person would do when somebody something to is throw thrown a it. bucket of liquid at you is move. <laughs> so it was so weird. Jim was like, you know, like the book, first of all, you're not their manager anymore. So I don't know what, what this is. Are you like working your way back to them with a burning love inside Frankie Valley? Like mm -hmm. I just, I like, he was like, they're like masterminds. They, they, he, they did this so they could like cause discord between mm -hmm. the other tag teams. So they could like stay on top. And it's like, I think they literally just ducked. Right. I think they just ducked. And like, LOD was like, well, I, that's rude that you slopped me. So now I'm going to fight you. I don't think like, it's not like Bulldog is out there filling the slop bucket and going here, throw this at them. You know what no, I mean? 100%. I was like, Jim, yeah, yeah, calm yeah. down, please. Seriously. I know he's really, really pulling the spin doctor on that one. I was like, mm. um, I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think it's as deep as you think it is, but that's cute. Yeah. Um, uh, he did have a funny line about Phineas though. Phineas uh, uses a headbutt on one of the Legion of Doom members and uh, he goes, oh, well, he's using his head finally for something more than like carrying like or wearing a hat or carrying dandruff from place to place. And you're just like, whoa. <laughs> I was like, OK, Jim, he's back with the heat. He said, I know. I will say I miss I miss the he is so shady and he will say so shady, the nastiest thing. Uh, at one point, Hawk of the Legion of Doom unfortunately like misses phineas and absolutely just like shoulder tackles the ring post mm -mm. with like such force that it project like his body it was so hard that like hitting the ring post wasn't enough to stop him the momentum yeah. of the rest of his body he, like carried him, like around he basically was like hit around the ring post like yeah it was like crazy. he like like his shoulder kind of like swung him out it like hit so hard yeah it was uh not a not a pleasant experience to behold. No, that's no. For sure. he, he like hits ring post, hits floor, like outside the ring. And you're like, okay. That look that would look like it hurt. Um Real so the, the match, as was alluded to uh by uh Vince McMahon, like this is not a uh a technical classic. This is not going to be <laughs> Uh, anything of the sort it is just, no. just big dudes hitting each other the whole yep. time mm -hmm. um and it's very much that it's very just like high impact move high impact move high impact move from both sides uh the bulldog and owen make their way down because why not 
Mm -hmm. Uh, They're the champions, and they got they just they got to get their two cents in before this Sunday's pay per view. You know, they come down to the to the ring apron. The bulldog hits uh, Hawk with the tag team title in the back of the head, which Mm -hmm. allows the Godwins to pick up the victory, and thus adds a little bit of a little bit of heat for this Sunday's um title match. So to see it. Yeah, I mean, all you've I, I feel like all they've successfully done is just piss off the Legion of Doom, which I don't know if that's really what your like MO should be, but yeah. um you know, you do what you gotta do. Yeah, and you know, they're they're fulfilling their new destiny as uh, you know, reformed members of the Heart Foundation and being just little I mean, not that they weren't little schemers before, mm-hmm. but now, you know, they gotta get out there, they gotta do their thing put their two cents in and by their two cents their giant gold champion right, belt right, into right, somebody's right. head and you know get on with their night so not hey, unexpected you do what you gotta do mm-hmm. um so then we are taken to south africa where hunter hearst helmsley with china is taking Good on girl. jesse james uh the honky tonk man is very bitter um <laughs> We get a replay of Jesse James smashing the Honky Sock Man's guitar. Always a delight to see again. Listen, we love we love seeing a comeuppance. And, Thrills me every time. Uh, we also get a like a replay of the uh chi- of WrestleMania 13 when China is ragdolling uh, Marlena. Just mm-hmm. just just a friendly reminder of who this bitch is because. Right. <laughs> Um, in case you forgot, or in case the audience in South Africa wasn't familiar Aware with, yeah, of, what, of the power. Also, China said, "Um, hair down for South Africa." She said, "Forget the pony. Like mm-hmm. I'm gonna have my my hair just whoosh, whoosh, down around my face. It was beautiful, sleek, shiny, and like not a single hair out of place. It was like as straight as her face normally is. It's oh, absolutely. Like, and I, I have a really that giving just... Edna mode. Edna mode. Hundred <laughs> percent. You are you are Triple H. Pull yourself together. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Um, I have a note that just says China, best side eye in the game. <laughs> Here, period. Because I've never in my life. Every so time they cut to this lady on the outside, she is just giving just daggers. But it's it's always like daggers on an angle. Like it's never, <laughs> it's never <laughs> it's never it's never dead on. It's never it's like never it's direct. always like when it's direct, she looks dead. But like when she's hitting you from the side, I, I would I would probably crap a little bit. Like I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. <laughs> like, 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 like someone would have to check. <laughs> because she is scary. She's being scary. She's, she is really scary. There might be a little like there could be an accident. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I also have a note that says like when um she looks like she's never experienced joy. Like, <laughs> like she, so, she only knows like malice. That's <laughs> it. I'm saying seethe 24 seven. That's it. Just seething. Like so angry. I'm so into it though. Cause it's such a, it's such a quiet seethe. Mm. Like it's such a, like a calm, cool, collected seethe. Like yes. where it's like, she just, is like a robot like you just go like activate and she just comes in and throttles people like kills people oh i love that and on it, command it, no it's feeling absolutely fantastic though like yeah oh love love it uh, she's just so like she it all is just her presence she sa- has said nothing, Not she, a thing. Like, you know what i mean like she Not hasn't a said thing. like a goddamn word and we're all just like I'm like what are you gonna china do? oh and... china's here hi uh, no don't no okay uh so Obsessed. this is the, this is the match where uh the technical difficulties became very apparent oh yeah did uh, we mention that the, the little episode opened with just technical difficulties through the whole episode yeah so i were i i i mentioned it like that there we were like technical had technical difficulties, difficulties. Yeah, 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 yeah but so basically like half of the matches all of the matches had at <laughs> least some or most of the audio just uh as far as the commentary team just w- wasn't there they would no. cut in they'd say like a sentence they'd be gone then it'd just be like just five minutes of just camera audio and camera audio is wild like mm-hmm. camera audio is crazy the fact Brilliant. that they didn't just like record this over like in a studio a la like 
1980 like six whatever they were doing back then Mm -hmm. um is nuts to me that they just like left it sans uh just sans audio like sans commentary Mm -hmm. and like it, this happened in 19 it's not like they haven't had time to go back and like go over it you know what and, i mean like, yeah say something yeah it was just um it was almost a silent film or like just i don't know like it was so weird and then it it seemed like someone it almost felt like someone was like standing on one of the cords for the audio and then they would like move and you could hear mm-hmm. jim um and honky tonk man for like two seconds and then they would like move back over again and like the wire would be like cut again like it was the right. most it was random like the days of like would... antennas you know what i mean Where yes like... like the signal was like not good <laughs> yeah yeah fully like um, someone needs to like go over there and like put their finger on it and then the tv like works again suddenly works yeah yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um uh the honky tonk man uh at one point jim is basically just like you need to move on from from jesse james and he's like i will never he's like i will never forgive and i will never forget and so honestly it, respect it i, I, I mean it. hold a grudge if you gotta hold a grudge but so it is alluded to that at this pay-per-view jesse james will be taking on uh the mystery protege of the honky tonk man we don't know anything other than he's found someone he's acquired a protege finally and Somebody he decided to... to do the correct thing and do it behind the scenes instead of on the stage where you can just be refused and publicly embarrassed multiple times uh, amen amen hate this to see is, it because i love to watch Star that Search, happen but right. swear i think it's not the voice like let's be so real right now oh just my God. i would have never a chat trust that man with a spinning chair and <laughs> never ever <laughs> ever uh, ever ever i i did say this does a good a good job of establishing jesse james as kind of like a, a better in-ring talent i think yes, this is 100%. the most in-ring like this is the longest we've seen him really like bell to bell yes um, and the most impressive he's looked in a match a hundred percent i completely agree i was shocked by how much I actually enjoyed watching him wrestle because he really was getting on my nerves for a minute there. We all know this. Check the tracks. Mm-hmm. Like we check, check, the check the check the tapes. Like we know this. First of all, ever since he cut that mullet, he's like I just he started to grow on me. Then when he smashed the guitar, now I'm really feeling it. But um, yeah, he just like he was so much more like physically involved in this match. Like I felt like he actually had moves. Like he had the upper hand for a lot of it. He was getting the crowd going. Like, I felt like they were really rooting for him. Mm-hmm. It just felt like it felt completely different. I totally agree with you. Uh, So the honky tonk man in his bitter rage gets up from the commentary table. And JR the entire time is like, what are you doing? Like, you, this is too much. Like, yeah, you, he's like, you he's need like, to sit down. Right. He's like, you're going way above and beyond what you're supposed to be doing right now. And um, like, at one point, Honky Tonk Man's like, don't hold me back, JR. And he goes, I don't want to hold you back. Like, but like, we're working. Like, JR's literally like, I was like, I, I want no part of this. <laughs> like, yeah, like, no, I, I just like don't want you to sabotage my paycheck tonight. Like, just sit down. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. So Honky Tonk Man runs over to the opposite side of the ring by the entrance, and he waits for his moment as Jesse James is hitting the ropes. He grabs his leg, trips him. Obviously, Jesse James is miffed, so he turns around to start yelling at uh, the Honky Tonk Man, which allows Hunter to sneak in and get the pedigree, get the victory, and yeah. So the Honky Tonk Man has officially cost Jesse James a match, and Jesse James grabs the microphone after the match and he's like, uh, shake, rattle, and roll your old ass in here and let's go now. <laughs> like he's like, Amazing. I don't he's like, I don't need to wait for your little buddy. I was like, if you wanna physically get involved, then like by all means. Then let's go. Yeah. Uh so Honky, like, you know, does the the whole song and dance. He gets up on the apron, he strips a little, which was a little off putting and a, a no one wanted party. to see that. He starts like no unzipping one. and I'm like it's a jumpsuit. It's one unit. It, yeah, so what are you going to do? It is one thing. Um, I, I did know. not even think of that. Like, you, what did you be wrestling in your underwear? Like, in your skivvies? Like, what is this? Right. So he, like, unzips it and, like, starts, like, taking it off. And then he, like, just, like, decides against it. Um, thank God. Thank and, God. <laughs> and, and he basically calms down enough to be like no my stooge will deal with this on sunday uh i'm not going to you know be the one to get in there Ooh, Ooh. whatever we knew we we've been new 
Yeah, and Jesse James, uh, super into this, acquired. There were a few people in the audience that had signs that just said chicken. Mm-hmm. And Jesse James grabs one of those and then is like in the ring when Honky Tonk Man walks away and is just holding the chicken sign. And at one point, he even waved it like a bullfighter. It was like, yeah, no, come on, you little chicken. <laughs> like, bop, bop. like <laughs> let's that. go. I love so that. Funny. I love a well-placed Jesse James crowd is turning sign. a corner for me in my heart, mind, and spirit. He's very funny. When he, he is into, pretty funny into his next like character, you're gonna love him. He's really funny. Thank God. I this is this is why I say every time it's like I nothing ever lasts. Like I'll get over things except mm-hmm. for Paul Bear, but I'll get over other things like Bear. like people's That's initial totally characters, bad. like whatever. Like I'm not a hater for life except for Paul Bear, but I get that. I get that. Yeah. Um, and that's totally valid, totally warranted. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so in our next match, we have Rocky Maivia taking on Savio Vega with crush this is a non-title match uh the these two will be competing again this sunday for the title so this is just a like, warm up see how you fare kind of deal mm. um the big talking point in the beginning is that Savio's more experienced which uh annoys the honky tonk man because he's just like you're the intercontinental champion you can't make mistakes and i'm like your hair, your outfit, your belts. <laughs> who says who says we can't make mistakes? That's crazy. <laughs> like, okay. Um, you, you're, this whole gig is a mistake. Like, I don't know who you who you're ruling. It's like mm, um, you were literally like, I mean, hair, outfit, shoes, vibes. <laughs> I'm just like, uh, uh. I, I was like, you chose. You couldn't even pick like a friend right you, you know you you Ooh. like missed the mark on that one so like who who are we to be just hooting and not hollering? you in this glass house no, that's smashing all saying. these guitars it just no. seems so crazy no it's like when people pick their nose while they're driving we can all see you you're in a fishbowl stop <laughs> 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 oh my and then talk about like distracted drivers sir if your uh, hands up your nose it's not on the wheel let's talk <laughs> Um, I will say, and I have to call this out because it's absolutely insane. No, they were not making jokes about the apartheid. Okay, in I was 1997, because this. that's nuts. That is crazy. I, as it was happening, I was just like, "No, we're not doing that." Are no, we? No, no, like, no, 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 no. And then they did, and, I and was then like, they did, and they did it in the worst way possible by saying, "Like, oh, it's like that thing, and when you separate your hair." I was like. like no that, no not at all like that actually no it's super not um, um super uncomfortable so thumbs down on that one WWE. Ooh, like, tomato <laughs> tomato Hate like, it. It's, it, let's learn and grow please um <laughs> let, and make it faster because i i can't i cannot do yeah this. no don't draw out the apartheid like uh, no, no completely tasteless so gross um, we do get a cutaway from uh, a little backstage segment with Ahmed Johnson. Uh, Jr. basically asks him, he's like, "Are you are you planning on bringing the the two by four like down to the ring?" He's like, "You think I would come down without it?" Like, I love it. He answers so like, quick. He's like, "Oh, you That's... think I would come without without Bessie, my two by four? Um, oh, and then the the best he the honky tonk man starts saying like something, and uh, Ahmed Johnson cuts him off. He's like. If you say one word to me, Honky, I will break this two by four over your face. (laughs) And that's crazy. It was just, it was so immediate and it was so final. And it was just such a threat that you just go, yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, I believe you. Like literally, like Honky Tonk Man started talking and Ahmed was literally, like if he had had hair, he would have been like, no, no, don't say one more word. Not one. He's literally like, I I don't know who. I four over your head. (laughs) He's like, I don't know who you think you are, but you were mistaken. Yeah, um, no, no, no. You got the wrong one. Um, See I mistakes, will... honky tonk. People make mistakes. Amen. Um, in the in the words of Hannah Montana, <laughs> everybody <laughs> makes mistakes. <laughs> everybody has those days. Um, I will say the the Ahmed Johnson leaves us with this like last line that I didn't know that he had in, had uh put into the uh the docket. Yes, uh, he walk it like I talk it. <laughs> I right it. in the docket. I love that. I love it. I love it. I walk love it. Walk it like I talk it. Walk it like I. Um. Talk it. Oh, and then Jim Cornette, because he was two for two on on the racism today, makes a hooked on ebonics joke, and I'm going to lose it. No. <laughs> like, they need hey. to put a muzzle on this man. The and the liberal are- use of ebonics in 1997 is crazy. 
there was a lot because then also you know Farouk has this we've talked about this before like later Farouk says like weird things and we're like ooh right don't like it but yeah I, and also because he was like ask everyone in South Africa if they have the hooked on Ebonics for right. Ahmed Johnson and it's like okay now you're dragging a lot of people into this that just feels icky I, literally uh, next to it I just have yikes yeah big yikes big ooh, yikes big yikes big yikes, um, big yikes. I'm glad that they kind of like course corrected after this match because we don't get another, or at least on commentary. Um, yeah, um, we don't get another saucy comment from Jim Cornette. But it's just so funny of all the audios to not work. Like these are the ones that worked. Like right. all these, like, like the whole episode things. we're just none of the match silence. But like none of the match, but all the the whatever the filth. I don't even know between right. Uh. Um, so I have Savio's just straight up choking Rocky at one point, just in front of the ref, just blatantly choking him. Choking he him. also just like puts this like one like trap grab thing on the on Rocky for like eight five minutes minutes of the match. <laughs> like it's just it's just like it's so long and it's so boring, and you're just like do something else like, yeah i'm so sorry because also it just look i'm like i feel like i like when people do that to me like isn't it just like a shoulder massage like i don't know he was just kind of going like this like right. squeezing it and i was like Interesting. don't people like that like i don't know i was just like this is such a weird one to hold for this long honestly at one point farouk does come down to start directing traffic because <laughs> apparently he's like an air traffic controller and <laughs> he's injured we haven't really seen farouk in weeks yeah. um so he's, he's, he's like sling. coming out in like a little like a little sling um but savio picks up the victory when he like rolls up rocky and holds on to the tights so once again cheating May maybe not so much the outside help this time but mm -hmm. nonetheless they know the tricks yeah he exposed rocky's most of rocky's butt cheek which i'm not yeah. upset about i don't like the cheating but i was just like oh hello mm -hmm. <laughs> i mean if you're gonna cheat at least give us satisfy a people lining. yeah you know thank I mean? you <laughs> like, at um, least give the people what they want and of course the nation immediately comes in and attacks rocky mm -hmm. um and then ahmed johnson and his trusty two by four plank comes down and <laughs> just starts clearing house Mm -hmm. um so after that we get a stone cold steve austin promo which was just truly spectacular mm -hmm. uh, as we know last week he was he pulled double duty so he had his own match and then had to fill in for psycho sid in the main event mm -hmm. but the only way he was going to do it is if gorilla monsoon gave him bret hart at the pay-per-view so uh stone colds basically he comes down to the ring and uh vince mcmahon's like oh so you're you're getting what you want like your match with brett and he basically was like it's about time i'm getting what i want because you and gorilla seem to just have nothing better to do than to hold me down mm. um, he's like you can't hold me down any longer uh and he's like you can't deny that i'm the baddest sob to walk into this ring as soon as the bell rings mm -hmm. uh, and you're like Okay, you again, no lies. Not no. No lies. Um, and then he goes on to address Bret Hart and how Bret Hart's always like whining and crying about being screwed by everybody. And essentially the uh the summation of the rest of the promo is you haven't been screwed until you've been screwed by Stone Cold, is essentially what he says. <laughs> He's Period. like, I've not known what it's like to be screwed over until I get my hands on you. Yeah. Um, and it he makes a very uh like pointed uh effort to be like the result of this match does not matter i'm looking for a fight <laughs> which is great love uh that. You, your thoughts on this one um i loved it i was so <clears throat> he makes this point at one point in the promo where he accuses bret hart of copying him oh yeah that and was at weird. first i was like what i was like what do you mean like no and then i was like well like and then i was thinking about it, i was like well maybe like where he's doing this more like hardcore like no bs like whatever i'm gonna screw you over like who cares like that kind of rattlesnake energy right um but at first i was like huh but mm -hmm. then i was like okay like maybe i could see that i kind of like i wish he kind of like went into it more or explained it more like i don't or he was like you've copied like 
I don't even really know what it was about, but for some reason that like stuck with me and I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, maybe like where he's going to be like the heel now. Cause they did, they kind of did a swap where like now Bret Hart is the yeah. heel mm-hmm. and Stone Cold is like the anti hero or whatever. So I thought that was like kind of interesting. Yeah. I'm, 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 I want to see where that goes. I'm also yeah. interested to see how, what this match is going to turn into because we've already had some pretty brutal exchanges and this is just supposed to be like a regular old match so just for funsies i know i was like that it really is so crazy i always am like floored by how there's certain beefs where like they don't fight for a really long time there's like this build up like mankind and undertaker like they weren't fighting every other week like there was like mm-hmm. a lot of build up and they fought other people and then they would like mm-hmm. undertaker's voice would like come over and whatever right but I feel like Stone Cold and Bret Hart fight so much. I'm not mad about it. No, I love no, no, to see no. It, but they it fight is... with like a more of a frequency. Mm-hmm. And I'm all, so when they were like, "Yeah, this Sunday," I was like, "Oh my god, we're like already here. We're already fighting. Right. We're already we're already ready to go." And it's I feel like this so one crazy. snuck up on us. This pay per view snuck up on us. Like, I could I, not I, believe it's another pay per view already. And it might be because we do like we're doing like other things. Like on, we have you know after dark and we're we're watching other things. So maybe it's just like There's so going much going faster. on. Yeah. But it's, I was like, damn, didn't we just watch WrestleMania? That's crazy. I feel uh, like, I feel like Undertaker's been champion for four minutes. No, literally. Um, That's because he got fireballed in the face. And then we have the day seen after him. we haven't seen him. So sad. Mm. I can't wait to see him come back though. Amen. He's going to be pissed. Uh, in our next match, we had the Sultan taking on Goldust. Uh, Goldust uh, had a little cat inspired look today. It was very, mm-hmm. yeah, I was just not expecting it. He just like had like little whiskers and then he like makes it down to the ring. Like we get the whole entrance. He takes off his wig and then he's got like spots, like little, he has, like, like leopard little... print yeah. on his hair. I was like, love that. I love, yeah, love, we... I love the commitment. Yeah, we said like Marlena was kitty something except mm. i used a harsher word um at this at the slammies and he said bet right. i bet i can too mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so you know he really gave it to us um i will i have a note that just says underrated gold dust ass okay let's talk because it's the outfit and you know i feel about mm-hmm. the outfit i hate it i hate the bowling gear because i just feel like there's there's it's like I don't know. I just made a lot of for if you're not watching us, I just made a lot of like motions with my hands. Yeah, there was a lot of gesticulations. Yeah, a lot um, of that. But yeah, I just it's just so tight. Oh. <laughs> and, and which I is the point. Yep. I get it because he's supposed to be like overtly sexual. Like that's the whole gag. But damn. Like yeah. every t- he takes off the robe and I'm just like like yes. I it, it just feels like that could like like split at any moment like yeah. any moment <laughs> yeah no it's he plays a dangerous game with that that uh one piece mm. that shiny one piece but that's that's his way he plays a dangerous game regardless because he was like he really laid it on this match like with the overt like mm-hmm. kissing sexuality touching himself like mm-hmm. he's really so going to town. good i mean yeah i was obsessed hey if your opponent is you know that weak-minded that they are affected by it then by all means period use it um at one point the sultan's just like over it he like leaves the ring and just starts like walking to like leave like yeah. and then you hear uh uh sheik just being like don't leave like this is our country like you're representing our country and you're like oh, i don't know what this means like i don't okay uh okay. which was just weird um i also have a note that i'm still pissed about whoever taught the sultan to pin because the fact that he just uh, like puts his two little hands on the on his chest and expects to like pick up any victory is crazy he literally looks like he's getting a manicure i'm not no, even gonna be, like he goes, he goes and you're like okay uh <laughs> you want square around 100 yeah. percent. i was like this isn't legally blonde all right this is like the bend and snap is not coming <laughs> like, i know please i mean like i would love that but I, I, I just know, know it's like, not. I just know, I just know it's, it's not. not. I, I've accepted it. Like, please pin like a normal person. I don't know. Uh, anyway, so this match is not very long because Hunter and China make their way back from China. wherever they came from and just start wailing on Goldust. Mm-mm. And then it's just all three of them. It's just all three of them. Yeah. Uh, they uh, do a like a double team pile driver on Goldust in the corner and then. The Sultan just lays on the cl- like the camel clutch and just For is fun. just laying waste to gold dust. Laying waste. What a um, sin. 
Yeah, everybody jumps in. China, Triple Eight. They all were like, oh, we're going to beat them up together. How fun. Do, 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 do. No, yeah. And just start like, like look at his this. life. Like, like, what is, I, I don't know. It's just like, why are they hanging out? Like, I know, like, they both are fighting gold dust. Like, I get that. But, like, you don't, you don't want to, like, fight each other at all? I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm always very confused as to, like, how they orient themselves as far as like you know what yeah. I mean like I know Hunter has like beef with Goldust like I know they have like an ongoing thing but mm -hmm. like if I was a Sultan I would just be like just swinging for the fences anyway like you know what I mean like mm -hmm. but if it was me I would I wanted to, if I had already almost walked out before I'm definitely walking out now I'd be like what, oh you guys got this no exactly <laughs> like, I'm out I don't need to get my hands dirty I'm yeah good. and and also I'm sorry if we're talking about we're doing this for the country representing the country ba 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 Iron Sheik gives him uh the flag at one point and uh the Sultan smashes and destroys the flag of their country over, over Gold Gold's back. back it's like <laughs> what are we talking about like right. the, like please i don't know i was just like i just feel like that didn't equal two the one and the one didn't equal two i don't know but you do you i guess yeah so we'll see we'll see if we see more of the sultan who knows so <laughs> anybody's guess next we get a uh a promo uh it just it, do you know do you remember uh I can't wait i can't you know, wait like, to see if i remember you remember like all that where there was like know your stars like know your stars and they would just like juxtapose like just like a bunch of pictures of, yes like, it's like jamie lynn spears like eats like hot dogs like from the bag you know what i mean like just something gross um yeah like something super random like stars they're just like us but it it was like a like it was a gimmick like it was right it was a gag silly. Um, yeah but it, the way that this was like edited together feels like that it it's, is just, you're kind of correct yeah it is just like a just weird frankenstein promo of like three separate promos there's mm -hmm. like a live promo that he's doing in south africa there's a live promo he's doing in kuwait and then there's a backstage promo that he's doing i guess in south africa um but they've cut it all together uh in and it just keeps going like back and forth so it's just like it's just a weird uh, promo i guess is generous it really is it reads more like a commercial or like an infomercial. yes um uh, fully basically he's like i'm proud to like be the hero like for you all like around the world which okay narcissus but like sure <laughs> uh, um he's like i'm proud to be the hero for you all um yeah and then and then he goes you know just does just starts ragging on the american fans as per usual mm -hmm. um which is i i guess in at the time like worked i feel like if he were to like that gimmick like his anti-american thing like wouldn't work today just because we'd all be like no yeah this, this sucks <laughs> yeah no tensions are like too high like no, we'd just be yeah. like like it would just world war three would break out immediately <laughs> like we'd be like cool let's do it like no, the revolution like, is here viva la revolution yeah there would be no like brett wouldn't be the bad guy like he would just no be we'd like, all be like "Woo, this man's preaching put him on the podium and that's what at I'm the next saying. rally because um, this is the tea um no basically and then he addresses <laughs> both uh hunter no my apologies both sean and stone cold he basically says like uh sean's like lying about him I, he uses some slur or word they bleep it out i don't really know what it was i have my guesses but um he basically yeah. is like he's like sean michaels that blank like mm. spreading lies about me um so yeah, Xavier you... and I had a little guess your guess your curse word. Right. What we thought. I think Xavier is correct. Um, I didn't think that at the time, but I was like, mm. oh, you are probably correct. What he said. So, um, so I mean, you can watch it and choose your own adventure because <laughs> we we might not ever know. Um, I will say my favorite line of this whole his, this whole little commercial is when he addressed Stone Cold and he basically he's like get better or get beaten and I was like ooh love that love that everyone's that's, coming with the slogans today I know they really he really came in hot um basically that's that he's like you're not you're not me essentially <laughs> and so do what you think you can but I will beat you for the third time mm. and you know what again not wrong not not, not wrong. you know. 
I know. We can I men- I want to mention this really briefly. We were at the wrestling store at Suplex and mm-hmm. we were like looking through the t-shirts and somebody at the front desk was like, "Oh, who's your favorite?" or somebody they were talking about wrestling obviously. And someone's like, "Oh, who's your favorite wrestler?" and this guy goes, "Oh, Bret Hart. I love the guy." And he's even like, "Oh my god." Like looking at each other and then he started talking about like the future of Bret Hart's career from where we are now and we were like, "La la la la." No, like, literally. I, I was like, like I, I walked walk- away. I was like You were like, like walk we- away. Walk away and I was like, "Okay, la la la." la. But like <laughs> he was saying he goes i mean he was the excellence of execution like he was just so amazing mm-hmm. like he, and i was like it's so cool that like that like we're watching him right now and like they're talking about like 30 mm-hmm. years later how he's like their favorite wrestler right. it's just really cool so i was like he just has that thing like i love bret hart i feel no shame in loving bret hart it's just like so amazing but yeah i was like we were like oh god walk away walk away walk away yeah right but, right it I'm telling you, these 30 year old spoilers, they're hard. They're hard. They're to hard. Swift point, girl. That was the, I like, I don't ever expect like that to be the thing. Like, like, I don't expect, I, how do I explain this? Like, I don't expect when someone's like, and I don't know why I don't expect this when someone's like, oh, who's your favorite wrestler? People will say, people we're watching now from 30 right. years ago. Like, I do, but I don't mm-hmm. because. I don't know. There's also like so many amazing wrestlers now and not saying that they also don't love them. But you know what I'm saying? Like it just it always takes me off guard. Right. Well, right now, like wrestling has like is, you know, approaching kind of the same kind of popularity today as it did like back then. So Mm. like people's favorites, like, you know, there's obviously, you know, in the interim where it wasn't at this like peak you know, there's tons of wrestlers. That's where you're like your Orton, your Cena, your whatever. That's where they live. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, when we're talking about like huge stars. Like, it's it's the era we're watching right now. Mm. Oh, it's Hogan, the era we're watching right now, and then like Roman, like and stuff today. Mm. Um, and they're on top of the world. They just had the the biggest WrestleMania they've ever had. So yeah, which we also watched this weekend. Oh yeah. Oh, we watched the two main events of WrestleMania 40. I had to so um, crazy. I had to fill her in. We had to give her um And I had seen clips which we talked about. Like it was I'd never seen so many places circulating like clips from the match. So I'd seen mm-hmm. some things, but watching it from start to finish was like insane. And we also watched Sting's last match. Wow, we had oh, a full we weekend, did. you guys. We did have That's a- why we're up so late. Yeah. Gap just uh, gabbing, just gabbing. gabbing and watching wrestling. <laughs> um yeah. so I'm uh, once again looking forward to that Bret Hart Stone Cold fight. Always down. Always, always here for always. it. Always. Um. So in our next match, after we cut away from, I guess South Africa, we're back in America because we're all over the place, and it is the Headbangers taking on Mankind Invader with Paul Bear. Um. We know that last week Mankind Invader had a little bit of like a squirmish at the end of the match, uh, where they came to blows and then. Uh, it dissipated and they were fine so uh the big question was like are they are they actually fine um basically Mm. we've just taken the plot of owen and bulldog and just applied it to vader and mankind without yeah any of the family intrigue because none of us are quite sure why they're together either in the first like it's we're all just like i don't know i guess break up Uh, whatever that's like you guys are that good to begin with for each other um so the headbangers do look impressive in this one. They do a, a double suplex on Vader, which is, you know, a, what you have to do when it's Vader. I swear. Uh, uh, at one point, Mankind is, like, just so fed up with, like, the match. He just, like, runs in and knocks, like, both the headbangers, like, out of the ring and just starts, like, fighting both of them by himself on the ring apron. And we're just, like, and Vader's, like, in the ring just, like, hello. Um, like, uh. Jim Cornette made some not like some nonsense about recreational dentistry in regards to mankind. Made no sense whatsoever. It was weird. It, but, it was uh, bizarre. The point he was like trying to connect was like that, like mankind just like attacks body parts. I guess. So then which, he's like a Doctor Frankenstein. Seems to be like I, I I don't know. The name of the game in wrestling is probably attacking a body part. Um, but, I don't know you if know, you've been here before. That's but... just me. Um, so it's not like we're having a battle of wits, right? <laughs> like it's you know they're not. No, they're, this isn't like a debate. Um, so the limit does not exist. So the recreational dentistry line was just wild, but he was on it for like a minute, which is why I wrote like it down. too long, too long. At one point, Jim during this match, I was like, Jim, stop talking. Like mm-hmm. he went on a like a tangent so mm. far, and like I was like, what? 
lead me back. I want to go back. What are we talking about? Like, no, just... 100%. I was like, you've yeah. taken me off roading, and your machete is dull, and now I'm in the weeds. Like, I don't no, know I'm what's sa- happening. <laughs> like, I'm saying, I don't know take what's me happening. back, hit it, put it in reverse, because now I want to go home. Now I'm <laughs> sticky, and I smell, and now I'm just gonna be upset the rest of the day. Like, just take me home. <laughs> Amen. Um, I will say, uh, Honky Tonk Man did have a um, <gasps> a saving grace moment in this. Yeah, he gave us a little, uh, just something we were thinking. Mm. Uh, very much in the same way that Jerry normally has like a line or two an episode where he says exactly where what we've like... been thinking. Um, so he just comes on, like, because he's not in this match because he's in South Africa. So he like comes on, he's like, hey, is Jim Cornette, like, I got something to say to like Jim Cornette, like, is are you, can you hear me? He's like, Jim's like, yeah. He's like, why did Vader fire you? <laughs> and just kept going, which uh, honestly, same, same. Why did Vader fire you? What happened? You got what? Two- Happened. and then all of a sudden you had no clients and then you disappeared somebody needs to talk about this because I, i'm we saying wanna know. you come back here with nothing no like hey jim where you been what's been going on who are your clients now why are you even here didn't even know you still had a job and suddenly you're just like announcing and at a match you're commentating on a match what do you mean right and like so can you tell man just mean like why vader fire you just wondering we were like <gasps> Tell us, tell us, Jim. No, literally. And Jim's like, uh, uh, I sold his contract. Whatever, it's not important. It's like, right. mm, did you though? Mm-hmm. Like, or did you just lose everybody? You're like, he's going like the the sunny route where it's like you have no no clients you're representing. You're not managing anybody. You just get thrown on the announce table once in a while. And I'm really not sure why you're here. Facts. So like use him properly if you have get it together, Jim. Because yeah, if you want to be the heel manager, be the heel manager. He was so good at that stupid tennis racket. I just want to punch him right in mm-hmm. the face. And when he right. got tomb- tombstone pile drive by uh or choke slammed, one of them, either way, attacked by out. the Undertaker. He was taken, he was taken out. It was the thrill. What a thrill. I'd love mm-hmm. to see it. But it's only because we saw him enough to get annoyed by him. Right. Now I'm just annoyed because I'm like, where have you been, Jim? Right. On a vacation? Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, and uh, it's it's and it's it's the audacity to say nothing. It's you know that, what I mean. It's and like that's what gets me. Right. It's just the like, oh, are we? Oh, we're just supposed to accept that. Okay, okay, moving on. And like no no comments about it. Which why well, I was like, you know what, honky tonk man, you get one gold star from me today. Right. Boop, just one. Mm-hmm. Thank you. And you have that like scraper ready, so don't I don't, do. Don't get you too know attached. I absolutely do. Yeah. Um, so Mosh spits something in mankind's eyes, which just ends his match essentially. <laughs> um, mankind's like blind, and then at one point he attacks Vader because he can't see and puts Vader in the mandible claw, mm. and like it's just choking out Vader. And like Paul is once again just like tr- trying to rip mankind's like body off of Vader because we're mm-hmm. we're here again, mm-hmm. um, which is just wild. Which absolutely- wild. I'm gonna. I have to say this. How do you not know that's not Vader? Or like, not one of the headbangers? Do- yes. How do you not know that you're fighting Vader? Compared to the headbangers, even just like the mandible, cl- I just know it's part of storytelling. Just feel Thank him. you. Just touch him. He has just a mask on, and the headbangers don't. If you're laying the mandible claw on him, don't you feel the chin strap, the mask? The what? Don't you feel right. the bod? Like, don't you feel the right. density? The headbangers are like small and and like light. No, they're on their- only small by comparison of them. Oh, like, Vader, not- but that's what I'm saying. Right. They're not like I'm not saying they're like petite. No, but, but by like, comparison, compared they're to slight. Vader, they're like yeah. <laughs> I just was like, how do you not know? Or even Vader just going, ow, like, stop hitting me. Like, I don't know. I was just like, this makes no sense. Whatever, it's fine. I know it's for the story. I get it. But I was like, how do you not know? Right. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But (laughs) we do get the Undertaker's voice just (gasps) booming over the the arena. Uh, Basically, he's just like, the end is at hand. Uh, He's talking about excuse me, Mankind talking about like how he's uh, going to experience the rage of the Undertaker. And then he really, he ends it. He goes, Mankind, you will not rest in peace, but you can burn in hell. And I was like, oh, <laughs> love Ooh, that. It gave me a chill all over again. Right. Mm. Love Wow. That. I love when people say like, you can't do this, but you will do this. I love right. one of those. Mm-hmm. Love one of those. Right. 
it's just one. like he's like no either way i am the ruler of your destiny so you know <laughs> wow <laughs> so good um and then that is followed up with the most <laughs> forced uncomfortable mm. um montage of mm-hmm. the uh bikini what did we call that the bikini we call it I said the bikini blast off, but that's not technically what it was. Right? Like, no, it, it it was the the ta- the bikini portion of the Slammy Awards, which of the Miss Slammy Awards. Why? So all night, all night they were teasing. They would show little clips randomly throughout the episode of like, like tonight, and it was like Marlena in her bathing suit. And we were like, that's okay. like the Slammies, right? Right. I, We've been seeing. Believe this. Right. me, I would never forget what sable wore to the slammies right um it's ingrained in my memory or what sable like, didn't wear to the slammies is... thank you so yes <laughs> what, what was clearly lacking and that's clothes but i like they just kept showing these clips and then leading up to just this silent montage with oh i'm sorry no not silent with the jazziest saxophone music just replaying the bathing suit portion it, it of was... the slammies I... And it was like it, when I tell you, like this saxophone was the porniest saxophone <laughs> I've ever heard. It like that is some porniest. straight up Bill Clinton ass <laughs> nonsense. This was crazy. It had no other purpose than to just be. It it was softcore porn, is what it was. They, they gave us a three minute like little montage of some softcore porn. It mm-hmm. was slow motion. It was all of them in bikinis it was very like it was zoomed in shots on asses it mm. was like tasteful side boob like we know what we're doing but you might as well have made it into a gif and put it on tumblr that's what i'm saying it would have blown up porn. on tumblr blown like, up uh, what, was blown the, what was the up. tag what was the tag on tumblr nsfw no there was another one that you used to do when you were like uh, oh oh god i don't remember oh my god i don't remember shame shame mm-hmm. on me because it's been a long time it was since we've been I tumblr mean, girls yeah. swear to god we were filthy <laughs> tumblr girls um, um yeah no it would have made it would have been a killing on yeah. tumblr but absolutely but it was just so well, ran- it was just so, so random. random why because again the slammies happened weeks ago and it was weeks like tonight ago. and i was like are we getting like a new bathing suit segment in south africa like what's happening and then they just played that for fun i guess right. it was so random Mm -hmm. they were like oh oh look we have hot girls here remember (laughs) like okay like remember like calm down put it away no (laughs) right it was just like okay like i i understand the audience that you're serving like i i baseline i understand what you're doing i get it do better but what like in the context of this, like this was the weirdest episode of Raw I've ever seen. Ever <laughs> seen? You some? What about what about you bringing Raw to South Africa? Said, bring it, bring in the bikini clips right. about Bret Hart yelling somewhere in Kuwait about how much he hates America. He was like, bring in. The, they were like, bring in the titties. Bring right. them in. Show them, show them the ass. Mm. Let's do it. Why? Like why? Like do it any other. <laughs> time any other time <laughs> any other time um speaking of ass our next match is <gasps> ahmed johnson taking on crush mm. but first we were visited once again by the commandant of the truth commission um so apparently our initial um Instinct? thoughts were correct okay. there is going to be some co- somebody entering the squared circle on the behalf of the truth commission whether that's him specifically or if he's the manager of like a team he used the term we a lot um when he was talking in his promo so it makes Mm. me believe it's like a tag team or something oh Um, but i could be wrong i don't know so uh, we'll see what that turns into i don't know what the truth commission really entails um but alas we'll see we'll figure it out um yeah, so this is Crush taking on Ahmed Johnson. This is just a, a everlasting feud between Ahmed <laughs> Johnson and the nation. Uh, Crush still has a bad face tattoo. 
Um, mm, I will I, say though, I I know this is this is shameful of me. He kind of looked good this episode. I don't know why. I don't know. I think because his hair got like kind of askew. I was like, crush. What's going on over there? Well, How are I, you? That's not real. So like, yeah, <laughs> he's not like a bad looking guy. He just has an ugly face tattoo. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know that, but like, I don't know. His hair like came in front of his face up because like the ponytail came undone, and I was like, oh, oh hey, girly. Wait, crush. Wait up. Not, uh i haven't talked to you how are you like not kelsey just having like slow motion crush like montages playing in their head horrible <laughs> i know what a turncoat i don't mean it i don't mean it i was just weak for just a minute listen you can like whoever you like i'm not <gasps> there there will be a time where we violently disagree <laughs> so oh uh, yeah for sure, um for sure. which is fine um, I have just on a note uh double cheeked up on a tuesday for um, what sh- for me <laughs> uh, for me, literally. Um, uh, JR on commentary was like going off on Farouk. He was just like, uh, he was telling, the honky tonk man was telling um, Crush to like listen to Farouk. And for uh, JR just goes, he's been talking all day. <laughs> like, like, and you're tweaked. like, oh. He was uh, waiting. He was waiting for somebody to throw out the bait about Ahmed so he could just grab yes, it or on. about Farouk he was no. he was ready to throw mm-hmm. hands ready uh, yeah of course we have you know D'Lo cheating on the outside um I did have a little giggle moment when Crush did three consecutive leg drops all while holding his like leg up every time he did it I don't know there was just something about it that just like it gave me very um uh what am I thinking of the Rockettes <laughs> mm. <laughs> like just 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 high kicks because I didn't realize until you said it that like most people don't like hold up their leg to do a leg drop. They just lift it. And right. I was like, are your jeans too tight? Like, what's that the issue? That might be it. Because they, they are kind of tight. Like, I don't know. I wouldn't wrestle in those jeans. Also, wrestling in jeans sounds crazy. I don't know. Crazy. I unless Bret Hart does it. Because you know how. That was great. That was great. Mm-hmm. Um, But <laughs> never forget. But yeah, I didn't realize it. And then you said it. And then he did it again. I was like, wow, that is kind of weird. Where he was mm-hmm. just like. Right. <laughs> I was like, Honestly. all right, go off, go off, go off. Do your thing. Uh, Savio Vega makes an appearance, uh, you know, because the nation needs to be in full force at all times. Um, Crush also implements that weird trap grab thing. And I was so like, is this like weird. a nation specialty? Question mark? I hate it. Thanks, um, I hate don't really it. know what's going on there. Ahmed Johnson performs what might be the messiest elbow drop I've ever seen. He like mm-hmm. goes to like drop the elbow on Crush and then like, Crush like moves slightly, and then it ends up just being like hit, uh, Ahmed's back landing on Crush's face, which just looked awkward and didn't really seem like th- what was supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, just not the best. No. So essentially, the uh, the match continues, and Crush takes off his belt and starts choking Ahmed Johnson with it, while the referee is distracted by one of the eight hundred members of the nation running around, mm-hmm. and um, he basically like all but chokes him out. Um, he then like gets rid of the belt, puts Ahmed Johnson quickly in like a like a sleeper hold so that the referee can like come over and check to see if he's done. Mm-hmm. Um, and no, Ahmed Johnson's not done. Uh, we continue the match. Uh, he counters the heart punch and then rolls into a cradle and gets the pin over Crush right in front of all members of the nation you love it when it's like it's happening right smack dab in the center of the ring and there's nothing they can do about it yep it happens so quick they're just like wait 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 and it's over Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, love mm it um so after the match farouk grabs the mic and this part is a little bit confusing to me um so I, i think what the gist of it was is that farouk wants to put ahmed johnson through like a gauntlet kind of situation where he beats mm. all the members of the nation um uh leading up to i guess the big boss fight which is like farouk mm-hmm. uh, but then he says something which was a little bit surprising is like if you can beat all of us then i will relinquish control of the nation mm. um so i don't really know what that is or what that's going to look like over like how long this is going to happen mm-hmm. um so we'll see what happens there i'm hoping that they clarify it next week because well Remember when Ahmed was like, oh, if I can, like, beat whatever, like, Farouk's not here, like, you guys have to disband. Mm. Remember, there was, like, that weird challenge, and we oh, were like, maybe hope they clarify what... this. Like, right. I don't know, maybe this is Farouk's, like, comeback, like, with his counter offer. Like, I don't really know. But 
I the verbiage the verbiage is what's really intriguing to me because it's like he's like I'll give up the nation of domination like or relinquish control of them Mm -hmm. so it's like does that mean Ahmed Johnson like inherits control or like he like they just disband like I'm very curious about it like what's what's the tea here we will find out and there needs to be a development because this feud's been going on for a minute for so long um but that's where the episode leaves us guys so that was um another episode of the new to wrestling podcast stick around this week we are going to have the final installment of the new to wrestling podcast after dark the rise and fall of ecw it'll be the part three um and to kind of tack on to that we also watched ecw's barely legal uh, their first pay-per-view 1997 um and so that's going to be kind of like a like a little two-parter i guess or it might be an extra long episode we'll see what happens mm-hmm. um so yeah so it'll be ecw the rise and fall part three and our coverage of barely legal 1997 um, so amazing so amazing uh it was first it was kelsey's first ecw pay-per-view yeah, I'd never seen one. And like, I was so excited because I think we talked about this in the last After Dark episode. Where I was like, man, I'd love to watch this episode. And I, I was thinking it like while we were watching it and you were like, oh, we should watch the barely legal one. And I was like, really? You mean it? You swear? <laughs> really? I really want to watch it. Like, And so we did when we were, um, we got together this week and we watched it. It was crazy. Yes, yes, yes. So um, I did get some footage of us watching it together. So I'll, I'll sneak in whatever I can sneak in or whatever actually works from that. Um, But yeah, so that was this week's episode, guys. Stick around for After Dark later this week and we will catch you next time. We'll see you there. Bye. Bye.